Today, heavyweight action as two of boxing's big men meet in a crossroads fight. For 1988 Olympic silver medalist Riddick Bowe, the road as a professional has been a smooth one to date. Undefeated in 21 fights, he scored 19 knockouts along the way, exhibiting both speed and power to annihilate his opponents. He's the hottest prospect in the heavyweight division. Standing in his way is former Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Biggs. He's one of the few big men that can match Bo's hand speed, and he expects to use his skills and experience to derail Bo's march to a heavyweight. Bill will have a 10-round heavyweight fight live. As undefeated Riddick Bo, considered by many the hottest prospect in the heavyweight division, takes on Terrell. Defeated Riddick Bo takes on Terrell Biggs as ABC's Wide World of Sports continues. Boxing live from Atlantic City as undefeated Riddick Bo, the rising young star of the heavyweight division, takes on Terrell. York. Our first boxing match of the season features a heavyweight bout between undefeated Riddick Bo and former Olympic gold medalist Terrell Biggs. We're going to join Dan Deardorff and Alex Wallow in a moment. But Greg Haugen had tested positive for marijuana following last Saturday night's upset victory over Hector Macho Camacho for the WBO World Junior Welterweight title. Haugen now faces possible fines and suspension of his license to box in the state of Nevada and could be stripped of his title by the WBO. The date of the Nevada State hearing will be set on March the 12th. And Dan and Alex will join me now in Atlantic City. And first, guys, uh, your reaction to the Haugen story. Well, it certainly came to us uh, as quite a shock, Frank. And Alex and I are going to get into that as this afternoon moves along during the course of the fight and after the fight. We are here to watch a little heavyweight action, though, Frank, and that's going to be a 10-rounder here from Harris in Atlantic City between Riddick Bowe and Terrell Biggs. I'd like to first of all welcome everyone to the first fight of our 1991 boxing season here on ABC's Wide World of Sports. As I told you, we're in the heavyweight division with a couple of big heavyweights, both of these guys over six feet, four inches tall. And when you talk about today's fight, you got to look at Riddick Bowe as the man on his way up. He's a skyrocket, and Terrell Biggs, a guy trying to hang on. But both of these guys came to national prominence as members of our Olympic teams. Tyrell Biggs capped an outstanding amateur career with a gold medal performance at the 1984 Olympics. As a pro, he went undefeated in his first 15 fights, moving himself into title contention. But he was knocked out by champion Mike Tyson in seven rounds, a loss which began a three-fight tailspin. Since then, Biggs has rebounded with four straight wins, setting up today's crucial matchup against Riddick Bowe, the man who looked like he would be Tyrell's successor at the 1988 Olympics. But after dominating Canadian Lennox Lewis in round one, Bo ran into a series of right hands that cost him the gold medal. Like Tyrell, Riddick also has run off a string of victories that have moved him into the heavyweight title picture, including his most impressive victory, this second round stoppage of Burt Cooper. Both men know the importance of today's bout. For me, this fight means um, that uh, you know I can redeem myself and and show to everybody and, and to the boxing world that, you know, that I am indeed uh, going to be in contention for the heavyweight title. Well, to me, I take every fight as it's, as it's the most important fight. So to me, I'm going in the fight thinking that Terrell Biggs is the heavyweight champion of the world. There's Riddick Bowe in the ring. He grew up in one of America's toughest neighborhoods, the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. That undefeated record. His apartment house was actually a crack house, and they had to dodge that coming and going. He's since taken his wife, children, and mother to Fort Washington, Maryland. And Terrell Biggs, certainly he has had a successful boxing career, the gold medal in 84. But he has also had a very well-documented battle with drugs and alcohol. To put it simply, he was a crack addict. And Terrell Biggs will be the first to tell you the greatest thing about his life is that he's been clean and sober for six years. Okay, here is Alex Wallow. And Alex, first of all, I'm glad to be with you as we begin our third boxing season together. Likewise, Daniel. When you look at these two, it's hard to find two guys who match up like this physically in the heavyweight division. I mean, they're really carbon copies. And they really are two men with outstanding physical equipment, but they're also two men who have always been questioned in terms of their mental makeup. Terrell Biggs always has seemed to be plagued by self-doubt, by a lack of confidence in his ability. But just when Terrell was in danger of slipping into permanent status as an opponent in boxing, he did score an impressive upset win over an unbeaten prospect in his last fight, and we will see if that has had an uplifting effect on Terrell. Riddick Bowe doesn't appear to ever have had any self-doubt, but he does understand that he got a reputation in the amateurs as being, in his words, crazy and lazy. 
In his pro career, however, with the help of the venerable 79-year-old trainer, Eddie Fudge, Riddick has apparently dedicated himself. And Dan, if he maintains his focus as he moves up into world-class competition, Riddick Ball will, in fact, be a force in this division. All right, Alex, the fight's getting ready to start. Uh, your thoughts quickly on the strategy of what we might look for. Well, Riddick Bowe has a, a tremendous edge in power and strength. He must take advantage of that by keeping on the pressure and wearing his man down. He should not let Terrell stay on the outside and make a boxing match with a slow, controlled pace because that really is Terrell's only chance to upset the 8-1 to odds against him. Well, the bell is right around the corner. Ten rounds of heavyweight action from Atlantic City. Let's go back now to New York. Back to Harris in Atlantic City. The fighters are in the center of the ring. Let's take a look at the numbers. And you see the seven years in age difference. But other than that, only a quarter inch and a half a pound separate these two fighters. The rules will be the New Jersey State Athletic Rules, a ten-point must system, the three-knockdown rule, and the standing eight are both in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And both the referee and the doctor may stop the bout. Our referee is Frank Cappuccino there in the middle of the screen, and he gets his fight underway. Riddick Poe wearing the all-white trunks. Terrell Biggs in the black, and Terrell Biggs takes a right hand right on the forehead, Alex. He, he definitely wobbled, Dan. And he does not want to get into a trading contest with Riddick. And Riddick Bowe, wasting no time, sensing his man's in trouble, smothers it. Eddie Fudge told us yesterday he has never, oh, good left hook in retaliation by Terrell. Eddie Fudge, Bowe's trainer, said he has never had a man hurt and failed to finish him. He said he finishes very well. Well, all of a sudden, you can see Bo no longer moving forward. No, that right. right. That left hand stopped him short. Right dead in his tracks. See some blood coming from the nose of Terrell Biggs. That is a chronic nosebleed he's had in many of his fights. But what the bow assault did do, Dan, was it got, rid, uh, it got Tyrell out of his game plan. He is now standing flat-footed and getting into a little bit of a trading contest, and that is not to his advantage. You saw the jab of big score several times. It's a weapon he's going to need if he has a chance to win this fight. Well, this was the kind of action we were hoping to see in this fight, and it did not waste long. Riddick Bowe landed a right hand in the first 10 seconds of the fight. Our three judges today who would score this fight if they go the distance, Phil Newman, Lynn Carter, and Al DeVito, they'll come into play if it goes the full 10 rounds. Started out like you just needed one official to count to 10, Dan, yeah. but... right from you see, misses. Even though Terrell has bled to the nose on, on at least five of his fights, he does seem to be bothered by a little bit. He has been pawing at it. Inside a minute here in round number one. At times in his career, Big has had a very sharp jab. You see how effectively there he's using the left, keeping Redding Bow away from him. Terrell Big should be just shooting the jab like he did right there, Dan. He's flicking it right there. It can be a very sharp punch. He's a converted southpaw, and you would expect that a guy who's been turned around would have power in his left. A good right hand to the body by Biggs. Oh, there's the heavy solid, jab. Good solid jab to the forehead. And an uppercut on the inside by Tyrell. He has fought back very well in this round one. We're coming to the end of round number one here in Atlantic City. Stay with us. This is action underway here in the second round. A round, the first round, where Riddick Bowe got in a telling shot early. It looked like Terrell Biggs was in big trouble, and then he... He stopped Bo in his tracks with a left hand, and from then on, it was a pretty even round. Tyrell fought back very, very well. There's a good solid jab, that time by Bo. Eddie Fudge told Riddick in his corner, he'll be looking for that right hand now, Riddick. Use your left. Again, a reminder, Terrell Biggs in the black trunks, Riddick Bo in the white. 
and another outstanding jab by Tyrell Biggs. The thing you worry about the jab, as good as it is, is, is he brings it back so low after he uses it. And when you're in with a man who punches as well with the right as Riddick Bowe does, that is, could be a terrible, terrible flaw. There is Riddick's wife, Judy. She's at ringside and not displaying a great deal of emotion. I'm sure that's on the outside. Oh, there's a good left hand. There's a left and a right, and then the second left scored big that time for Riddick Bowe. As long as Tyrell is going to wait and let Riddick Bowe get off first, he's not going to win this fight. He must dictate the pace with the jab. Keep Riddick Bowe from coming in. Try to keep him from getting his rhythm. Good body punch there by Riddick Bowe. And another right, and then came up top. Good combination. There was a good left hand off the ropes by Terrell Biggs. Well, you can see that was a conscious effort to the body by Bowe. Terrell's face already swelling up under both eyes, and I believe a little bit over the eyes. It's, it's a war of attrition right now, Dan, and when you have superior strength and power like Riddick Bowe has, that just has to be to your advantage and a Tyrell Biggs disadvantage. Oh, there's a good jab. You see Terrell bothered by the nose. It may be broken and he may have be having trouble breathing through it. You can you can see him trying to clear it after every clinch. And when you're having trouble breathing, obviously that plays into your stamina. And, and Terrell's stamina, not his heart really, because he's fought back under adversity. Broken collarbones, 32 stitch cuts. But in terms of stamina, it has been a question mark at top competition. This fight's scheduled for 10. We're finishing the second. The bell sounds for the beginning of the third round. Biggs and Bo meet towards the middle of the ring. Now Bo goes forces. Terrell Biggs over towards the ropes. What a good solid shot that one. That's right. Riddick started to clown a little bit, make some faces at uh, Terrell, and he wiped the smile off his face with a real stiff jab. The other factor we should bring up, uh, Dan, is Tyrell's tendency to cut. Terrible cut against David Bay, as we said, 32 stitches. Reopened the left eye uh, against Tyson. Right eye busted up and caused a stoppage against Francesco Damiani. So that both eyes have a tendency to cut and cut badly. And Terrell Biggs is not doing a very effective job of keeping his gloves up and blocking the shots of Riddick Bowe. He's taken repeated hits to the head. And he's also waiting too much. He just waited there until Riddick threw a three-punch yeah, combination. Him out, let him out. Let him go. Come on. Come on out. Terrell Biggs in the black trunks has to initiate the action. Work off that jab. <laughs> there is an attempt at an uppercut. It's been a, a very good punch for Riddick Bowe. You know, it's only when you see that, oh, oh, there's a shot to the back of the head by Terrell Biggs. No warning, though, from Frank Cappuccino. No, really, when 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 the other man turns away like that, Dan, he has a right to punch him. That's that's a Bo's fault for turning away. That's the foul. And there is Terrell Biggs' father, James. And you can see the look of concern as his son took another heavy right hand. He got Terrell started in boxing. He fought in school and in the Army and interested his son at a, at a young age to get involved in this sport. The jab flicking by Biggs is missing. The one by Bo landed. I started to say, Dan, these two guys are so similar in size, both 6'4 and change, both 225, that only when you see Frank Cappuccino, the referee of the picture, do you realize how big they are. Two huge men. We're in the third round here at Harrods in Atlantic City. Coming up on the 32nd mark. You can see that when that bow of when that jab, rather, uh, of Terrell Biggs is, is effective and flicking out there. Riddick Bowe is a little cautious. There, a good, oh, a good right hand. Oh, and Bowe is hurt. And Riddick Bowe is hurt. Riddick Bowe is saying, come on in, but there was no doubt that he was hurt. Terrell Biggs oh, making a 
the fight of it. Here we go with the start of the fourth round. A reminder, this fight was scheduled, is scheduled for 10. And Terrell Biggs, who's been on the short end of this fight up to this point, closed the third round with a flurry, and he hurt Riddick Bowe. Alex, he caught him clowning a little. Solid right hand, and I think Terrell was even uh, surprised by the effect because he's not supposed to be a big right-handed puncher. And he fudged in Riddick Bowe's corner. Stop slamming around. You're letting him get off first. Use your jab. Oh, good right hand that time by Bo. A lot of movement being shown by Biggs, but it's been Riddick Bo who's had the big punch of this round, that right hand. Yeah, this is ineffective oh, movement by Terrell. He's not landing anything. It's just really just pushing him around the ring. Dan, we should note that's really about the first time either fighter has been up against the ropes. That this is a 17-foot ring. You might notice the flag there in the turnbuckle and back. Rock Newman, Riddick Bowe's manager, changed this ring this morning from a 20-foot ring to a 17-foot ring by adding an extra turnbuckle. And that clearly against a fighter uh, who is as mobile as the opponent uh, is today, Tyrell Biggs, is to his fighter's advantage. So far, it's been a, a phone booth fight. We'd like to remind our ABC stations that at the end of this round, we're going to be going to a station break. Let him go, Tyrell. You're holding Tyrell. Let him out. You can hear Frank Cappuccino telling Biggs to stop holding. And Tyrell's thinking right now, Frank, <laughs> I'm tired. I've landed a few good punches, but uh, this guy's a buzzsaw. Another good right hand, partially blocked by the glove, but some of it still landed. You can see it move the head of Biggs. And I think I see blood is... I'm it, not sure. It looks like blood is coming from the over the left, left eye. eye of Terrell Biggs. That is the... The cut that we talked about, the first open, 32 stitches in it against David Bay. Opened again terribly against Tyson. Well, the two fighters right now, certainly Terrell Biggs, looking the much more beleaguered. And the more desperate. Yep. Terrell Biggs really has been pulled. That punch looked low. That left by Riddick Bowe appeared to hurt Biggs, and it was low, Alex. And we should point out that the book on Tyrell Biggs is that he is vulnerable to the body, going all the way back to his amateur fights with Teofilo Stevenson. And ABC's Wide World of Sports will return after this word from our ABC station. Hey. And the beginning of round number five, a reminder that of Riddick Bowe's fights, 19 of his 21 professional fights have ended in four rounds or less. He's gone to the eighth round twice, won both of those, Eddie Gonzalez and Pinklin Thomas. And we are now here in the fifth. But that was another good solid round, Alex, for Riddick Bowe. Solid round for Riddick, and he seems to me, Dan, to have started a little bit slowly here. I mean, this is to, to Terrell's advantage. It's one thing that for taking your time, but... Uh, Constant pressure. I just think Terrell is going to wilt and under the uh, effect of those punches to the head and to the body and the effect of the nosebleed and the cut. Oh, another right hand to the body by Bo. Couple scoring jabs. Trying to work. Yeah, trying to work the cut. Very, very little coming back from Tyrell right now. I don't think he's yet just talking about surviving. Now the ropes come into effect. But I do think he is just saving up his strength for a few desperation punches of fun. Around, I'm sorry. Yeah, just covering. Nothing coming back. Bo is accepting those clinches. A powerful fighter, Alex, who was able to muscle his way around the ring. That will almost certainly come into play later in this fight. And there, well, Riddick Bowe Jr. Knows he's on television. Yeah, I didn't appear too excited about it. No. 
it has been a nonchalant go family watching this fight. His, his father has been described as a man who never saw a camera or a mirror he didn't like. And a lot can be said that his son feels exactly the same way. <laughs> Riddick Bowe in the white trunks, Terrell Biggs in the black. Good stiff jazz by Terrell, but he's bailing out with him. He's throwing him going backwards. And they don't appear to have much of an effect either. You see uh, Riddick there dropping his arms. He may be a little bit tired. There's been a tremendous pace for a heavyweight fight, Dan. But if you had to walk into this fight right now and pick the guy who's 30 and pick the guy who's 23, I don't think you'd have much trouble. Now, but right now, in the closing seconds here of round number five, I think Riddick Bow is, is waiting for a second win. He looks a little bit tired. Riddick, uh, sorry, Terrell seems to have taken the initiative a little bit more. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds here at Harris. Deardorff working along with Alex Wallow. Up to this point in time, and a good right hand by Riddick Bowe. The fight has been controlled by Riddick Bowe with the exception of the third round where Terrell Biggs landed a shot that hurt Bowe. But the balance of the fight to this point has belonged to the younger Riddick Bowe. Pretty easy fight, I thought, to score, Dan. The first four rounds. Only the third going to, uh, to Tyrell, 3-10-9 uh, for Riddick. The last round was close because of Tyrell's uh, rally at the end of the round, but I still gave it uh, to Riddick Bow and have him up by three points at the halfway mark. Stop punching, both. Come on, man. One of, one of the things that Eddie Futch has been trying to get Riddick Bow to use more is his right hand. He's, he's not the classic right-handed bomber that you would think. He popped the tendon in that hand, had surgery before the Olympics in 88. And you can see, Alex, he is making an effort to use it more. Yeah, he says he's got full confidence back. I'm not quite sure. Eddie said he was terribly reluctant when he first took him over as a pro. Again, a bow jab. Oh, good one-two. Probably the best one-two by Terrell. Again, Biggs going to the body. And, and Bow is just taking it. And he didn't react. Well, there, Dan, if you're looking for qu uh, to answer questions about Riddick Bowe's chin, you have to say there that, I mean, he didn't look shaken or close to going down, but he didn't react well and didn't cover well after he was stunned. Wild right hand by Bowe sails over the top. You might get away with that at this level against Terrell Biggs, who is not known for, his, for being a strong puncher, but as he moves up to the highest levels of this division, he can't stand there like that. a much more cautious approach being used with Riddick Bowe than, say, Terrell Biggs, who found himself in the ring with Mike Tyson after, what, 15 fights? Yeah, they're stretching uh, Riddick out a little bit, and I think, you know, very smartly so. Some cynics believe that Terrell Biggs' handlers are very, very smart boxing people that do as Lewis Dan and Shelly Finkel realize that Terrell was just never going to be competitive, and rather than take a chance on him, not getting the big payday, they pushed him into it after 15 pro fights. There's two losses after that to the likes of Francesco Damiani and Gary Mason might prove them correct. A bad right hand there by Terrell Biggs. But he told us one thing yesterday. He said, I'm not a coward. We're coming to the end of six, and Biggs is proving that. We're underway in the seventh round. Akira O'Hara, the trainer of... Terrell Biggs working in his corner, trying to control that swelling around the left eye. Ralph Citro in the Riddick's corner, also using the end swell on his left eye. But of the two, Tyrell has the much greater problems. The flow of blood hasn't been a problem, but you can see that it's beginning to swell close. For those of you who followed Tyrell Biggs, career since he won a world championship uh, as an amateur in 1981 his body looks stronger and harder you must say than he ever got in the past he says he's the best condition he's ever been all fighters say they're the best condition they've ever been but in his case it may well be true Here 
in attendance ringside, of course, an Olympic teammate and a good friend of Terrell Big, also from Philadelphia. And Terrell really has been, in some ways, the forgotten member of that team. So many of whom, Holyfield and Meldrick and Pernell Whitaker, who are among the top three, maybe out of the top five fighters in the world today, pound for pound. And Mark Breland was on that team who got all the attention at the time. That's right, but and Terrell got a lot of attention in the beginning, but you know, with his three straight losses and it just kind of disappeared until this fight. And I just think it's nice that Meldrick still has enough feeling for Terrell to come over here today and try to root him on. by Riddick that just missed. I mean, it landed, but it just missed doing real damage. See Terrell trying to counter with his own right there, and he missed badly. All the way. Is Riddick Bo Alex pressing the fight? Well, he's not pressing. He should? No, I mean, he's, he's, he may be pressing it as much as he can. But uh, I think if he had been able to continue coming forward and use this small 17-foot ring and stick the jab, work the body, I think he could have gotten uh, Terrell out of here by now. But Terrell has fought very, very valiantly. I mean, give him credit. He got a lot of uh, places in this fight where he could have laid down, and he absolutely has not. He told us he wasn't coming here just for a payday. He told us he wasn't an opponent. He may end up being an opponent, but he has a lot of heart. It's ready. Bo pushing Biggs up against a rope. Biggs trying to counter punch. Not landing much. This is eighth round action from Harris Marina Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. Riddick Bowe and Terrell Biggs are going at it here. One would make the assumption that, that Riddick Bowe is comfortably ahead on the scorecards. Yeah, there really has been a lot of meaningful punching no. in the last three rounds, Dan. This is scheduled for ten rounds. No title is at stake. Oh, there's a good right hand by Riddick Bowe. Biggs tried a left, left himself open and took a shot as he did there. You know, we criticized Riddick for waiting, but on those two occasions, he waited and counterpunched very, very effectively. Oh, and there was another good stiff left hand by Bo. And we've also criticized Terrell for not taking the lead, but he says, hey, pal, I just tried to take the lead twice and I got drilled. Nothing like a couple of solid power punches and the counterpunching uh, to make a man uh, forget about wanting to shoot the jab. An attempt at a left uppercut that time by Biggs. Riddick Bowe's favorite combination is the left hand, the jab, followed by a right uppercut. You just have to be amazed that Tyrell can get away with carrying his left so long. Yeah. Right. He'd say it's because he's tired, but he really does it from the opening bell. He's more comfortable shooting the jab from there. Now he's paying. Good combinations, and right now, Terrell Biggs hanging on. He took a good left hand up against the ropes. And if Riddick Bowes is going to finish her as any fuck says he is, we'll find out. <laughs> he should use this final minute 10 to, to get Tyrell Biggs out of there. With a big right hand, and down goes Tyrell Biggs. An overhead, chopping right hand. I'm not sure how cleanly it landed. Tyrell pulls himself up. 50 seconds left in the eighth round. They can stop this fight right now. You see the official for the commission up on the ring post. Up and on it's the over. Ring. It's over. Frank Cappuccino stops the fight here in the eighth round. And Rob Newman goes right to Terrell, goes right to Riddick Bowe, rather. And Big still down. A tough, tough fight. Two tough men. I think Dan gave everything they have, and in the end, Riddick Bowe had too much. We are going to bring you later on some excerpts of fights between Evander Holyfield and Michael Dokes and George Furman and Jerry Cooney. Right now, though, let's go back to New York. We're going to go to a commercial break, rather. We'll be back here to Atlantic City.
Okay, we are back here in Atlantic City. Riddick Bowe won this fight. It was stopped in the eighth round, Alex. Dan, this is the first knockdown. Riddick Bowe pushing out the jab, backing Terrell onto the ropes. That was really not a clean right hand. I just think Terrell gave out. He gave everything, as we said, and I just don't think he had anything left. That was not a clean right hand he went down from. He did get back up, and then here's the end of the fight just seconds later. And you'll see in the background, Dr. Frank Doggett of the New Jersey Commission will be, I'm not sure on this, no, I guess on this angle we won't see him, but the, the doctor was up on the apron. I'm not sure if Frank Cappuccino saw him or heard him, but he looked at Terrell Biggs, and he jumps in and stopped the fight at that point, I believe. Okay, Alex, how about now if we turn our attention to the two men who are going to meet in the next title fight in boxing's glamour division. That is for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. That'll be Evander Holyfield.